This is Jeff Chrisman, and I'm very happy today and very grateful to be visiting with the artist Petra Bay. Thank you so much for taking the time with me today. Hi, thank you for taking time for me too. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I thought what we would do is to start out, and of course, I obviously have you know numerous questions. Would, would love to learn more about you and about your work and uh, just how it's evolved and how you got started, but really to start the conversation, I thought I would start out by asking you just in your own words, uh, as far as what your work means to you at a deeper level, just anything that you might share about that. Okay, just happiness, really. Um, yeah. Because my past was a lot darker than my future and present, I feel like, so it's all about happiness and expression, just, just anything that get you up and going, I guess. Yeah. I'm always so busy, so, and when I am, I just try to be as happy as I can, because I'm just so grateful for what I have now, so. That's beautiful. I love that, and I was going to ask as well, if, if was there any kind of an aha moment going back to when you started creating works of art? Was there a moment in which, I guess what I'd almost, it'd be really cool to hear, is, that, is there some point at which you realize that, that creating art could make you, you know, could make you happy and also to share that happiness and that love with other people. Oh, well, that's where it just like made total sense. I guess when it started making other people happy and what I could do to make, could make a difference, just that's the best feeling in the world is when I get to do some of my like charity stuff that I do. Um, but yeah, uh, I started creating when I was just like super, super little and I didn't, you don't really realize what you're gonna be when you grow up, especially, I, I'm 27, so I'm not that old, but I guess back then it was, you're not, you don't grow up to be an artist. That's like a hobby, a thing you do. So it's really cool that you can grow up and be an artist and you can do whatever you want. And they say, you could do whatever you want, but you know, uh, but yeah, I didn't really realize that. So art was just something I always did. I like to write was one of the, first things I remember doing when I was little I just like to write poems and just write stories and write just anything expressing the way I feel because I because the way I lived I felt like I was like in my head a lot because that's the way I needed to be kept um with my own thoughts um and then whenever I got older I just liked it. I figured out how to sewing at a really young age so I like sewing and then whenever I was uh so I guess in my teenage years, I think I was about 19 or 20 and I started crocheting and that kind of took off a little bit. I started being able to make money that way. And then Janet Skates is my mother-in-law. I've been married to her son almost five years now and she's the one that convinced me to paint one day. Mm. Um, it was right after I got back from a trip visiting my uh, godfather had died. So I went to see him in a, a hospice and when I came back, I was just bummed and I didn't want to do anything. And she was just like, paint with me, paint with me. I was like, no, 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 no. Cause I just didn't feel good. She didn't like that. So yeah, I think we painted once and that was it. I was like, this painting is so hideous and I can't <laughs> paint, so I'm gonna do it. And, but anything that I think that I can do, I make sure it gets done if I'm gonna do it. So it's always something I wanted to do. I just didn't have the resources to sit down at the moment and be able to paint, but man, it felt good. <laughs> you told me <laughs> now I get to mix that with embroidering sweaters that looks like artwork and it, it helps me express colors a lot faster and easier than, you know, sewing something or crocheting something. And now I just get to play with all of it. It's all art. That's just who I, I guess I was meant to be, so. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate you sharing it. And I was gonna ask you as well, are there, certain inspirations, or I guess if I could ask a little bit about your process, you know, just in terms of, you know, what speaks to you or what speaks through you uh, when you're creating works, all right? I don't know if you have specific subjects or just getting some sense of, uh, of what you're sharing, so to speak. Okay, well, my colors, I definitely feel like when I see colors, that makes me, whenever I hear, what inspires you? And you would think it's so many things, but really it's, well, motivation is just the charity that I do. Um, so that's the motivation there. And then, and, and just, you know, it makes me feel better to express myself. But when I see colors and whenever I look, you know, like at florals or Instagram's a great place when you see like a pretty sunset or it, it could, it could be literally, it could be the ground. It could be a leaf. It could be something dying, something new and just picking up colors, just seeing colors, I guess is the thing I want to 
paint and that's how I get my idea and and ideas just do this. Yeah. <laughs> Any idea yeah. do this all the time. I think that's why sewing and crochet was one of the first things that I felt like super inspired by doing it because you can make things you can make like anything you want and with painting it opens up that but with like a lot more color and a lot more freedom because you could just you just you could just start and just go with it yeah yeah and I was going to ask you not to put you on the spot but I'm, I think I'm noticing and I asked you a little bit about this you know before we started talking uh, as far as a couple of pieces I think I'm I don't know if I'm seeing two uh, two of your works behind you so I didn't know if there's anything you might want to share uh, just in well, terms I, of I got one out this one. Oh, okay I didn't see that yeah this one for fun because this is the first one that started it all and I literally found it last minute on the side and this was like the first thing I'd ever did oh wow yeah and yeah about spring of like a year it was like a year and a half ago when I started painting and then this one, I'll just go ahead and get it out. We're here, yeah. so why not? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. And then that has kind of evolved into just having freedom and being able to paint, like, oh, there. So that's kind yeah, of what I do that's now. beautiful. Yeah. And line works are just like, whoops, we'll put that anywhere. And yeah, and the more I do, obviously, I, do, I just got... I, that the colors I'm like what was I thinking but she was like just put it on there she's such a great inspiration too and she's a big name so yeah Janet Skates um but yeah and so from there I just started trying to create something new because there's so many different kind of art and I really wanted mine to be like a, just keep it like as its own little brand and its own little style and and whenever it gets like I'm seeing the same thing, I'm like, no, 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 something new, something new, some new, <laughs> new colors, some new this, some new that, and uh, and a lot of it has the line work is what I'm putting in like the new ones, and I think that just like helps my mind kind of slow down because even yeah. when I'm cooking or talking or sewing, it's just. I just keep going and it keeps me busy when I'm watching TV. When we're in the car, there's like loads of yarn. Just It's just left in there. And when I you know, I go to bed, there's like still got like the light on and you know, he's asking me, you gonna go to sleep? I'm like, in a minute. And then it's like for one in the morning, I'm like, you gotta go to bed. So yeah. those are my favorite. And that one's gonna be covered in it. And so hopefully there'll be more that look like that because I really yeah. like that. Absolutely. And, you know, it's interesting when I look at that. I mean, just the color, the way it's just the way it comes together. It ha it definitely has a very, uh, and I don't know if, you know, I was just going to ask you if, if I'm seeing, you know, I realize, what do they say? Is it uh, beauty's in the eye of the beholder? Or everybody sees something a little bit different, but I'm really seeing, it's just, it's a very uplifting, there's a, a very uplifting energy, you know, from that color. And so I didn't know if that, if that's how you see that or. Oh, well, yeah, I'm just like. It's a little chaos. I see some chaos. <laughs> I see fun. I see happy. So yeah. I get that mix. So as long yeah. as it the warm spot in your heart. And even though I use like I do use a lot of pinks and yellows and stuff. And I know there's but there's some people that if I do some earth tone, they get it just like that. Because they're like, you don't do a lot of it. Well, when you do it, I love it. And but yeah, so I, I do do the girly girly stuff, I guess. It, it looks like it tends more towards girls, but I like trying to like, keep it wicked and put some like black marks all over it and kind of rough some of them up a little bit. So it's not always so happy, but it's always yeah. got, like something going on. Hopefully that'll make someone just think and be able to just appreciate because, because yeah, I want it to look like I work my ass off. Let them know there's, there's, there I am. I'm there for you. <laughs> yeah. And as far as the, uh, you know, as far as you were talking about the chaos, I mean, I, I was almost going to ask, or I am going to ask you if, uh, you know, if, if it is possible, do you find in your own life, is it possible to find happiness amidst the chaos? And, and, and knowing sometimes there is a little bit of darkness along with the light. I didn't know if that's been your experience, you know, just in the recent past, just as far as, you know, light, you know, being able to find happiness amidst all these things happening. And, yeah well the stuff lately that's been happening is nothing compared to like anything else i dealt with in the past so i'm like covid picking a president today <laughs> the kids <laughs> my four kids and i'm homeschooling too 
two of them are there one's two one's one and then i babysit another one-year-old so there's five babies in there and i've been oh, wow. all morning and i'm just like <laughs> making balls and have a second and then when i you know so i think chaos is always it, it's always been in my life and the older i get i've had the privilege that my husband is super here so i think that that's yeah. good because sometimes he's like hey and i'm like okay and by the time i'm here he's like hey <laughs> <laughs> hey okay just calm down because i'll just be doing a million things so even though you know my life can be here instead of here now it's just kind of like i'm making i'm making yeah. worse <laughs> nothing else did it <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then do you find too that i mean I, I i definitely sense that you bring a lot of energy to this i mean it definitely really i mean unless i'm mistaken it really is coming through do you find that this help, helps you in terms of being able to direct that energy as you're as you're creating something, does that tend Absolutely. to kind of help help kind of make that where it's where it's focused or directed, so to speak? Yeah, I think that's why some there's some are small, some are big, some crochet things I do. I just want to do something small and cute, and sometimes I'm like, I want to do this, and then I'm like, well, what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> so for the most part, it's been getting done, or I pull it back out and get too many things out at a time and too many thoughts in my head but lately i've been able to just just make myself discipline myself a little bit to like get those things done because they're what makes me feel good but i think that that comes with like a, a mood of what you want to do and i think when you change your mind and your head of and how you feel you kind of want to work on something else like sometimes i'm pain all week and i just don't even i can't even like look at a brush for like two weeks i'm like what am i doing <laughs> but i'm in you know sweaters with this little bitty stuff or i try to crochet like i just got done crocheting like 150 little squares for some lady in europe and i was just like okay well you, you get busy and then sometimes I, I just get in and out so it's good to I think right now in my career, I can kind of, I'm just trying to do exactly what I want because I'm used yeah. to that, the business side of having to like get stuff done, but I'm fortunate enough to where I can pick my projects. And now I'm just like, just do you for a while. <laughs> try not to do stuff for, not for anyone else, but just try and keep on track. Because I got to kind of, I got to try to grow. I can't stay here. <laughs> and yeah. <this> has, <laughs> I, I love it. I love it. And that's what I was going to ask too. I mean, is, has that been somewhat of a, uh, uh, just a learning experience as far as I realize, you know, with artists, you know, there's the, the creation, the creating side, and then there's also the, you know, the business side. And so I didn't yeah. know, you know, what that's been like for you as far as, you know, balancing those two, uh, those, those two parts of this. Super happy. I started the business side with crochet. <laughs> And a lot of things just were like a couple original ideas and a lot of it was just like make this certain thing and try to put it on the uh, the um what is it etsy is what it was and oh, i kept yeah. my business for a while and i actually had that for a couple years and every once in a while i have commission i sell a few hats here and there and and then and my husband was he's he was part of a tulsa band for a few years uh dear paul and they went around Tulsa and did stuff and then they finally ended up one of the band members moved away so then I was like oh, can I do my stuff now <laughs> not to put them out of the way but I was like please 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 if I could just and and he's super sweet and super nice he's like anything you want and and now he wants to like he sees me like getting things done and being able to meet friends and all the Tulsa people and he's just like he just wants in on it again so <laughs> and, he, and he's really good at drawing and stuff too but he's just a little more in the shadows like I was at one point so now he's kind of like he's ready to he'll be out there soon so yeah we try. We, we try yeah and I was gonna say when you have two creative people in a household it, it sounds like there is kind of that there had does there have to be that give and take a little bit as far as you know kind of kind of you know sharing the energies and the time and you yes. know kind of making it all work to you know making it work with with both people you know having that creative drive so to speak yes because all day i try to do my day job which is babysit and then i try to crochet or paint in between then and when they're napping i take full advantage of that and then he gets home from like you know 10 hours of work and he works for the city and so he's just like pissed when he gets home because he's out there working working 
And then he's just like exhausted, you know, physically. And my head is like, woo. So when he gets home, it's all like, let's sit down. And he wants to do his stuff. I do mine. Yeah. Babies are up for like two, three hours. And then we're good. <laughs> but to bring back to another point, I'm really glad that I was prepared with the whole Etsy and crocheting business side. Because then you grow into this art thing. And then, I don't know, you hear about people being taken advantage of or people, you know, not being very smart with what they, their choices are. So that's why, or not knowing how to price things, not know how to do this. So really happy I got a couple years of that. And then Janet had a lot of good advice. And then there's just so many other artists now and they all, they've all been through it or there's something that you can always give and then take, so. Woo, Tulsa. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And that's, well, you know, it's interesting that you bring that up because I never thought about that before. Just the whole, you know, you know, learning experience. I'm, I'm assuming as an artist, I don't know if anyone can really necessarily lay the whole path out for you. And so it sounds like this is something you just, it's kind of a path. It sounds like it's just a constant path of discovery to a certain degree. You just kind of have to put yourself out there and, and kind of learn, you know, kind of learn these lessons, so to speak, along the way. Yes. And sometimes it really sucks. So you keep down quiet about it, or at least I do. I'm not going to tell anybody I did that. But yeah, <laughs> definitely just, and I had twins at a really young age. And I, people like used to ask me, how do you do it? How do you do it? And I didn't have a question back then because I'm too busy to answer your question. And I grew up and I'm like, how did I do it? And now I have babies now. And people are asking me that question. How do you do it? how do you do all this stuff? And I, it's just instinct and it's about what you want and how you're going to get it. And I guess it's just not how hard you try, but it's, you know, it's in here as much as it is working your butt off and going to meet people and sitting down in the business, writing up a website. It's also hard. And I think if you keep headstrong, you do and you get like a group of artists around you, it starts making it easier. So thank goodness. Yeah. Broken arrow too. Broken arrow and the Tulsa artists just make it, and opportunities like this, it just makes the, it makes you feel so happy. And it makes it yeah. a little <laughs> <laughs> I love that. And I was going to ask you too, I know you had mentioned that when I first communicated with you, you know, before when we set up the interview. And I remember you mentioning that you definitely ha have this sense of, a, of an artist community or, you know, the community of artists. And so I was going to ask just a little bit about what that's been like for you, just as far as, you know, that's how that's helped you to, you know, to be networking and, and being friends with other artists and just any, maybe any, any uh, important lessons that you've learned through that, just in terms of being part of the community. Oh, yeah. Well, I'd say Janet again, Janet Skate, uh, she's my mother-in-law and she was the one that even said, you know, push your Etsy a little more. And I'd only had crochet on it for a while and nothing really. And I was sitting in bed with babies, feeding them when they're baby babies. And I was like, not yet, not yet. So when it was time you know i had her right there and we were watching we would even watch videos or you know look at classes to see like what you could do to boost that up and just get these followers and followers that you want and how to you know just communicate with people and and through that and then just opportunities like you know from having things like at a restaurant people like the local art so i think that came from probably the tulsa artist page i didn't know anything about mm -hmm. that till somebody a show I met so many people I wish COVID was a little later because I just went to a bunch of shows right before COVID and everyone was so happy and cool and I was like why haven't I been doing this long before this is so nice people talk about you know you pay money you don't make anything and I was like sometimes but you meet so many people you know I buy my soap from uh, okie doke okey dope soaps and I have this one girl that does uh, my makeup it's just all these people it's little things and you can help people help you um and you just get to see pretty art and just meet with people and yeah from there you just I got uh even uh yeah just little things it just builds it builds so many different things where you can do classes with people or you can even do your own or you go do these art people I just love being surrounded by people I guess I never really was when I grew up I wanted to be but I spent a lot of time alone so now that I'm older it, it means a lot and I think if other people got out there it would mean a lot to them this yeah <laughs> yeah I really appreciate that too because that's and I know even for myself not that I'm an artist uh, it took me a long time to realize how you know important there was always a tendency to isolate 
And, uh, you know, it took me a lot, very late in life to realize how important it is, you know, to, to get out and really, and I realize people don't necessarily come to us that we've got to really get out there and mix it up with people and, and, and be willing to, uh, to take that chance and take that risk. But it, it really does pay off. That's for certain. Yeah. 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 And I was going to ask just as far as, you know, just as, you know, not only as an artist, but as a human being, you know, since we are at this point in history, just getting some sense of what the past, I guess, six, seven months now that we've been dealing with the pandemic, just getting some sense of what this has been like for you in terms of, you know, your, your, you know, the creative side, as well as just the human side of this for you. It's been awesome. <laughs> I, I, I love to be the positive one in the room, but like, even if I tried not to, I couldn't because COVID is just, I think it's done. I think it kept like the, I think it brought, it brought me together. I got to um, come together to meet like Lisa Reek and I've been spending time with her and then Pam Watson and Cynthia Brown, a few people that, you know, you can like hang out with and hold or talk to when you need something yeah. and before everyone else was so busy. And even if they weren't that busy, it was just kind of hard to deal with, you know, talking to other people, but um, the sales has, ha, sell part of it hasn't even been that bad either. Sometimes hmm. it's really good, sometimes it's bad, but I think that's art, but I think people are still wanting to buy art and people are coming together because they don't have much going on, which is good. Everyone needed to slow the hell down and like appreciate <laughs> what they got here. Because the more you just sit, you know, you sit with what you got and you make stuff and you make something, you meet someone, you meet someone, it just, it makes me feel whole. And I think with everybody not being as busy with these little things that distract them, I think it's good. It's good for art and it's good for people who really want to start like doing their own original stuff and quit like, let me do a commission here, commission there. It kind of, at least it's, it's focused me on do whatever you want. You got all the time in the world. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know? Yeah, and I was going to say sometimes it is a luxury, is it not? And I don't even maybe luxury is not even the right word, but I guess almost like a gift, isn't it? Just being able to have that time. And I, I wonder if in some ways this, if people choose to take this time and, and utilize it to the fullest, is that I wonder if in some ways this is an opportunity for people to maybe more deeply connect with themselves or find, you know, quote unquote, find themselves to a certain degree, or maybe, you know, more of that than they have in the past, possibly. I think everybody needs their alone time. If you don't get alone time, yeah. you're going to get bananas. <laughs> 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 when your stuff is so distracting and then you have like alone time when you don't expect it, I think it'd be dangerous. I think you need to, everybody needs to spend a lot of alone, once a day by yourself, just like in thought, thinking, quiet place, just like this, just like, well, I guess we're here. But I yeah. get to speak my mind, get to be totally relaxed, nothing's going on, but. Yeah, if you don't have that and creep up on you, and I think with COVID, either it's you're here right now or you're here, and I'm like, woo! Yeah. <laughs> Both of them, it's okay to be up. It's okay to be down. You make good art when you're down. You make good art when you're, you know, up, and you can just like run around. That's good for you. <laughs> Release some oh, energy. Yeah. Do some art. It's a time. Yeah. yeah, I was gonna say it kind of feels like right now, like you said, you know, it's either really up here or or you know, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of in between. Is there? It's it's. it's Seems yeah. like it's either one or the other. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. And then I was going to ask too, and I definitely want to make sure that I uh, that I mentioned this as well, and I want to make sure I'm understanding this correctly. I understand that you also, in terms of your you know your art and the creative work that you do, that if I understand correctly, you have a foundation where you actually part of the work that you're doing. If it's okay to ask you about this, that you're sharing, you know, that you're sharing with others and also giving back to others as a result of the work you're doing. So I would love to hear anything you might want to share about that. Yay, well, yeah, it's, cut, it's underneath my website, uh, petrobayart.com, and it's called Because I Care. And I don't know, I just, I, I, it's something I always wanted to do. I never knew it would be named. And one day I wrote it down because I was like, cause, you know, I like to do wordplay. Like a lot of my paintings are like, I don't, one of them's always sunshine when she's gone instead of, you know, it's a play on the, now I don't even know what the real one is. <laughs> one of them was rain, rain, come and stay. So I always try to do something like that instead of, you know, and sometimes it's negative instead of positive, just to be sassy. But no, but the because I care just came out of writing. And then, um, but yeah, that's to help little kids. 
because I wasn't so fortunate growing up and there's still and it's in and I did a boys home actually a, a show not too long ago it was um oh I wish I could remember what it was but it was one that afterwards you would donate to uh, the place, however much percentage you made off of that. And that really made me, I did, I had my foundation set up to where I would help kids. So I would pick up a story of my life, elaborate on that. And then, you know, ask for like, you could either donate money or you could buy art or you could, you know, and so that's how you would go about that. And one of them was uh, head lice because I had it for about 10 years of my life and it was awful. And whenever you grow up and you I went to the boys home, it kind of, it really made me realize, okay, you're doing something way big because, you know, you still see people suffering and, and my, all my brothers, everybody has it different. And uh, so it's hard to figure out what someone needs at what time, but it's always good to be nice. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it really made me feel better about what I was doing because I was like, there's still people that are always going to be hurting. And I've been so happy for so long and, you know, you just appreciate it. And so it makes me appreciate myself and what I do. And that's the real reason I don't stop what I'm doing is because it, it, you know, it, it makes me feel the best thing in the world is to help someone out. It helps, it, it makes me feel better than being a mom and a wife sometimes too, because at least you don't have to deal with, you know, feeling like crumb one day and treating somebody mean or sassy, taking it out on somebody, you know, when you give, you give it and it's such a good moment. And then, you know, it's sad because it ends and then someone has to go be treated badly or, you know, but they, but it gives them hope. It just passes like hope. And sometimes being a mom and a wife, it's like, where's the hope? Where's the, a hundred days all the time doing my because of care, making me feel super good, you know. I think the first one I did was I dropped off a big old box of head lice medicine at a school after typing and seeing, you know, what kind I could buy or couldn't buy. And the next thing was buying a bunch of food and giving it to the homeless down in uh, Tulsa. And I made sure to like make it and give it to people that it's all. And it, it, just, it just makes me feel good. It makes yeah. me feel good. Being able to share it, it's not like, getting attention but it's bringing like attention to these things and how they're going to keep going just like good and bad everyone nowadays it's the same thing you know you never it you know there's no such yeah there's yeah it's a you're always going to be up or down so it's good to help all the time and that's what that is <laughs> yeah no i dig it i definitely do and i you know and what's interesting is as you're sharing this this is just kind of coming up intuitively for me is that there it is is this also about healing to a certain degree in other words this is you know taking the healing that you've you know any healing that you've experienced and sharing that you know sharing that outwardly with people you know in addition to showing people love and showing that yeah. care and concern it well it definitely makes me feel better i get so distracted all the time i think that's why i do like you know if i finally start doing line work because sometimes like i can't paint anything let me just you know focus my energy i think it's going out and being a wild woman and, you know, pain creating every five seconds. So this makes me feel good when I'm sitting in the car, you know, I don't want time to think. And so I just do that. And so, yeah, I think that kind of takes it out of me. And whenever I, I think there was one show, it was going to the little boys home uh, one. I was like driving there one day and I just started like losing it, getting so sad. And it was because I was going there second day after these people were like, you're so nice, always so happy. And they told me all these nice things. And then, you know, you have to leave those little kids. And then I had to, you know, and some of them are older and I went back and I had to leave again. And, it, and it's just like a reward. And whenever I was little, I guess I always knew what was right and what was wrong and how we were being treated, but you don't, you can't grow out of it and you can't really see how bad it is till you leave. And so whenever I get to help people like that, it, it feels like it heals an old part of me or it makes me go back in time to when I was little and like figure out, you know, if I was standing in front of me, I would be so proud because I was gonna, I was gonna help you. Yeah. So it's still one of them too because it makes me know that like that makes them feel really good as much as it would you as a kid so it makes me feel good for definitely the kids I'm helping more than anything in the world and for them to grow up and be able to feel good and help people as well is like whoa it's like a magic yeah yeah and I was gonna say that that is so incredibly moving and, and, and just I get that sense as you were sharing that that it's, you know, the, uh, just that, you know, connection with people 
and you know doing whatever you can do and i realize and i don't know if that is do you find that that is sometimes part of this too is that there's only so much that you or anyone you know that anyone can do for people who are, are going through these things or are kind of knowing your limits as far as what you know what you can and can't do or, you know, yeah what's, i think what's possible i don't feel bad at things i can't do right now because yeah. my husband would kick my threat. <laughs> He'd be like, no. And I have to tell myself too that how big I'm going to get because I'll see in five, I might not even be in Tulsa in five years. No, but yeah. I, I really do being absolutely ginormous. But that's because I want to help people and that's who I'm going to be. And if I don't think that I can do that, I'm not going to get there. So I feel like I'm going to be huge one day and I'm going to do that because I just, I really love what I do. And I say, you know, in my head, uh, the charity things I do, I do sometimes say, no, slow down, like take things one step at a time, really think about what you're doing. And, you know, I can't give you the clothes per se right off my back because then I won't have anything to carry with me to go to the next place. So, yeah. you know, yeah. I don't make, you know, every, like, um, my because I care, I put that in a whole corner of my art stuff. That's what, that's what that is. And there are some things for like the homemade thing. I have these granny square hats I make. And I have a, there's a, they're almost 80 years old couple, Bob and Lucille, who make them for me. And so I can give them some money every once in a while, mostly around Christmas to help them with stuff, but they make them for me and I pay them per square. I make them up in the hats and I sell those to make money for them. And every once in a while, whenever I was doing the shows, I would need help or I would make it. So I would need help. I'd say, okay, I'm going to slow down. I'm going to pay somebody to do this. I would tell my husband, he's like, okay, can you do that? I'm like, yeah, I can actually afford to like pay some more. That'd be fun. You know, I got this much, you know, so if I have this much, I'll give this much, you know, I try to like, keep it like, keep what you got. So, cause you, you got to keep going. I got to keep going. Oh yeah. So, it's possible to give some of the shoes off your feet, but it's also good to be able to walk up the mountain with the damn shoes on and keep going. <laughs> <laughs> that is so, that is, yes, that is so wise. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. And it's, yeah, not because I know sometimes that, that's that human struggle. You know, we want it, we want to fix everything for everybody. And especially when you have a big heart like you do and, and it, and it comes across, but you know, it's, it really is. It's, it's definitely very evident. And I also get the sense too, that you, I'm assuming it would be very hard to separate these things out. I get the sense that, you know, you couldn't really take all that away from all the things that you do in the community and helping people and separate that from your artwork. I just get the sense that it's all, you know, that it's all part of one thing. I don't know if I'm mistaken on that. But. Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. And whatever I sell for, I have like a, my little budget of the month is $30 on ads. So on Instagram, I put my $1 ad up, you know, sometimes I get one follower, but then you can lose three in a day. So it's usually like one or two followers on average you get, but most of it, I think it's word of mouth. And definitely when I was doing the shows, you get just people, you know, that want to know you and then they tell people, they tell people, they tell people. Uh, so that makes it nice. But yeah, I think together, I mean, like you, like you were saying, you, you got to put it all together. Cause if I don't put it all together, how am I going to eat? How am I going to eat a pop tart for breakfast? Because I got to be in there making eggs for 20 minutes. I got to be able to eat that. <laughs> pop tart and try it so I can get my friends to go to work. <laughs> That's helping me save time, man. <laughs> yeah, there you go. There you go. Absolutely. Well, no, I was going to thank you so much. I mean, this is literally, this has been incredibly moving for me to, to experience, you know, your story and, 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 your, and to see your work and to hear about it and all the things that you're doing in terms of, you know, paying that forward and sharing with others. It's, uh, it is really inspiring and it's really uplifting. And I, I have to tell you, I, I just, it is very, it has definitely made an impact on me and I'm, and I'm certainly grateful to you for taking this time to talk with me about it and to share this. Thank you for another opportunity. I love the I love Oklahoma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you again so much. And it's been, it's been great visiting with you.